Spiritual Warfare, by Anna von Reitz. The first thing that we must notice is that, spiritual warfare, takes place in the realm of the unseen. In terms of law, that means that the battles take place in the jurisdiction of the air, under ecclesiastical law. More personally for us, it is a war, between what is true and what is false, between belief and knowledge, wisdom and foolishness, intentions and results. For millions of Christians this battle is to be won, according to the words of the book of Revelation, not by power, not by might, but by my, God the Father's, spirit alone. Though this does not imply that we can sit on our rumps in the middle of a spiritual war. Our actions may not count for much, but we must still make decisions for ourselves. How will we recognize evil? What is our own answer to evil? As a wise man once put it, we can resist evil, but what we need to do is to renounce it, to turn our backs on it, and walk away, putting our attention and energy elsewhere. This is what Hunter is talking about when he says, I am done with evil. And this is a simple statement of fact. We all need to be done with evil, not afraid of it, not concerned by it, not focused on it, not confused by it, just done with it. Like a false friend or a bad recipe, done with it. We need to tell the truth, walk the truth, and become the truth, and let the rest of the chips fall. We need to be free, by setting ourselves free. In the end, we are the authorities who rule over our own lives. Throughout my work, I have been describing the works of evil and how evil operates, so that you can recognize the modus operandi of evil. For example, they always pretend to be part of the group they are targeting for destruction. If they want to target Jews, they pretend to be Jews. If they want to destroy Catholics, they pretend to be Catholics. If they want to destroy a nation, they pretend to be part of that nation. Just as our municipal corporation subcontractors look like Americans, sound like Americans, and in all ways appear to be Americans, while in fact adopting a foreign political status and taking their orders from foreign governments. They also accuse their opponents of doing whatever they are doing themselves, a process that our medieval forebearers called, the pot calling the kettle black. So, if they are lying, they accuse you of lying. If they have just stolen a horse, you are accused of being a horse thief. This aforementioned trait of evil is especially reliable. The evil ones always seek to distract and deflect the attention of their opponents, so that you don't see what they are doing, much like a magician deflects your attention to pull a trick. Look closely at all the nonsensical subjects that are constantly center stage in the mainstream media for no apparent reason. Your attention is being captured and focused on things that, a, don't impact your life, or, b, things you can't do anything about. That means your imagination and your time is being wasted, too. There is a reason that the BBC's motto is, listen and obey. Dot. They and all the other major news producers aren't really in the business of truthfully reporting anything to you anymore. They switched to a new product line without telling you. They are instead in the business of molding your opinions for you, choosing your candidates, your toothpaste, and even your beliefs. Their narrative about human-caused global warming is a good example. People believed in this because the news media and politicians and purported experts and authorities promoted it. And then, one realizes that a single large volcano can produce more carbon dioxide in a single day than humans have released during their entire sojourn on Earth. The whole pseudo-scientific hoax was all nothing but an excuse to seize more regulatory control and impose more taxes, taxes, taxes. The evil ones also misrepresent and deflect in other ways. They do things like creating false paperwork concerning you and your political status. They make up false narratives about your life and occupations. They keep these phony dossiers in coded master files so that you are never likely to read them and object to the big lies they have established about you. In this sprawling kingdom of lies, normal great-grandmothers are running distilleries and smuggling rum into the United States, and all the public employees who feel like they are insiders and in the know, believe this tripe without a question. Middle-aged accountants are suddenly drug runners. High school students are trafficking toddlers. And the local plumbers' union hall is a gathering place for dangerous social deviants and insurrectionists. Provided with such misinformation from higher-ranking authorities, the pawns bring SWAT team members to the door of a farmhouse and blow apart housewives and babies like they did at Ruby Ridge, and deploy industrial flamethrowers and tanks against peaceful members of a religious sect, 
like they did at the Branch Davidian community in Waco, Texas. This, in a country founded on religious freedom. And everybody knows it. Obviously, these people aren't playing with a full deck. Their own leaders are misdirecting them. They are acting on authorities they don't have. And enforcing laws that don't apply. Just like the camp guards at Aquits. Note the NY, municipal, district attorney wasting hundreds of millions of dollars on extra security because of equally ridiculous Trump indictments. Apparently, Alvin believes everything he is told by the FBI and the FBI parrots whatever their employers at DOD, INC. Tell them. And nobody tells the truth. And they are all profiting at our expense from this. They were all prepped up and waiting for millions of armed Trump supporters who never came. Like the January 6 non-riot where the Capitol Police had to open the doors and wave all the purported insurrectionists inside. It's the Muslims. It's the Jews. It's the Democrats. It's the Republicans. It's the black people. It's the white people. It's the January 6 protesters. Or is it the Capitol Police? It's the camp guards. It's the politicians. And if it's not them, it's the generals, who made the plans, gave the orders, and paid the paychecks. Or is it? They will say that they were just, following orders, too. Whoever it is to blame, it is always anyone and everyone except that it isn't them, the source of the problem. The whole game is like playing, pin the tail on the donkey, but there is no donkey, and no tail, and that is just the way that the masters of deceit like it. Blame anyone but them. This is what all the distraction and fear-mongering and finger-pointing is about. Keeping attention deflected away from the actual perpetrators, who are, after all, Sitting there in plain sight, owners and operators of foreign municipal corporations housed in the District of Columbia. They also always try to profit themselves using the Hegelian dialectic. They create a problem, take your pick, they present their pre-planned solution, and they profit from the problem they created by selling their solution. This motivates the evil ones to create more and more and more problems. Not less. Think about one dollar. 3 trillion in phony vaccines and related products sold to the respective world governments by the same people who brought us the human-caused global warming hoax and tax plan. As usual, Yeshua got the last word concerning them, that you shall know them by their fruits. The good trees bear good fruit and the bad trees bear bad fruit. So, when you pay trillions of dollars to be safe in your own home, and you are not safe because your own public employees are 10 turnips short of a load, Yes, it is time to take action. As my mother said to a friend contemplating divorce, be done, and not just done, donadone. Dot. Done the way you are done when you exit an abusive marriage, a bad job, or a lying lover, when you are never coming back for any reason, when your mind and your heart are settled and in agreement, and you just walk out the door, you are engaged in spiritual warfare. When you stop resisting evil and renounce it, instead, the fight is already over.